I don't like this, means this is not real life. The real, real life is different. So if that real life you want, then you have to follow the process. That is being discussed here. Tapo dibhyam putra ka Swami gave another service in the Arlington? Yeah. Arlington Church, yes, I was there. Will we be there again sometime in the future? That if you arrange, I can go. I am at your service. <laughs> I, I have dedicated my life for this. Whenever you call me, whenever you invite me, I can go anywhere. Why Arlington Church? I can go to any place. Because it is my duty to give you, uh, to deliver you this message of Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. That is my duty. Swami, what is Om? Om is the concentrated name of God. One say Om instead of Krishna, gain the same benefit? Yeah. But why instead of Krishna? If one Krishna is the same, why not Krishna? Why stick to home? Home, home is formless. But Krishna has got beautiful form and young. And we are addicted to beautiful form. Why? <laughs> Something which is not beautiful. Krishna, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Akrana Amankarasmi. Amongst the alphabets, I am Omkar. But Krishna says that I am Omkar. So, in one sense, Omkar and Krishna the same. But I can see Krishna, very beautiful, and so many things. But I do not see in Omkar that thing. Therefore, my preference should be to Krishna. Why shall I stick to Om? Capacity and knowledge? Yeah, is that determined by, by the previous life of the soul? No. You can earn the capacity in this life also. You forget whatever was in your previous life, it doesn't matter. The sastra is there and the spiritual master is there. The saintly persons are there. If you try to understand from right sources, then your knowledge is there. It is not that because in previous life you had been something, therefore you cannot understand. It is not like that. You, as human being, you have got the capacity to understand. Just like I am explaining that do you like death, do you like birth, do you like disease, do you like uh, and I am an old age, everybody else says, no, I don't like. Then the next point is, that do you, if you want to avoid it, if there is any process, do you like it? And I certainly yes, yes, I like it. So this is the common sense of it. It doesn't require any great achievement or pre-education. These are called common sense things. Not only cow, any animal that should be uh, object of our compassion. Uh, uh, if we we want to eat something and leave, so if you have got sufficient food stock in other kingdom, we have got vegetables, we have got grains, we have got meal, so many things, for fruits, flowers, so many things. Just like we are living on these things, we don't feel any inconvenience. And they are according to 
medical science also, they are very rich in vitamins, food value. So why should we kill? Especially if we are human being, the cow is supplying us milk, the most important food stuff. So instead of giving protection to the cow, if we kill, do you think that is very sensible thing? No. I am supplying something very nice, and if you kill me, is that very good gratitude? So at least in human life these senses should be there. <coughs> Cow protection is recommended in the Vedic literature because it is giving the most valuable food stuff, milk. Apart from other sentiments, it is supplying, and in exchange of nothing, she simply eats some grasses from the ground, that's all. You don't have to provide cows with foodstuff. The, 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 the things which you refuse, you take the grains and you supply the skin, you take the fruit pulp, you supply the skin. You take the, I mean to say, from paddy, you take the rice, you supply the straw, and she delivers you a very nice food stuff. And I have discussed all this point in my Srimad Bhagavatam that human economic problem can be solved simply by having some land and some cows, that's all. Cows will increase the multiply. Eh? Cows will increase the multiply. Yes, every uh, 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 living entity will multiply. That is another thing. I mean to say, uh, from cow we get uh, milk, from milk you get butter and so many milk products, and from the field you get sufficient grains and fruits. So your economic question is solved immediately. If you have got some land, uh, the land is a uh, Immense land is still lying vacant all over the world. Yes. But they have diverted their, their energy in a different way. That is the miscalculation of the present civilization. They have forgotten that the aim of human life is to advance oneself in spiritual realization. So time should be saved as much as possible and that time should be utilized for spiritual realization. But we have encumbered our civilization in such a way that we have lost all simple living things. We have uh, manufactured in so many ways, encumbered ways of life, therefore we have neglected spiritual life. And because we have neglected spiritual life, there is no peace. If you want really peaceful life, then you have to make your material necessities simplified and engage your time for spiritual cultivation. Then you will have peace. And that is the best type of civilization. Plain living, high thinking. Now at the modern day, the high living and plain thinking. Eating, sleeping, meeting, this is plain thinking. Are these thinking as in the animals? They are also thinking what to eat, what to live, how to defend, how to have, uh, have a female for sex life. These are problems in the uh, animal life also. So if we keep that animal life problem, at the same time we can claim that we are civilized, this is very nice. Civilization means how to get out of this material uh, miseries, birth, death, disease and old age. That is uh, a real advancement of civilization. If there is any way and means to get out of these problems, then we must adopt in this human form of life. And that is possible in this human form of life, in no other life. Yeah. 
not as necessarily all Hindus are in a vegetarian. Not necessarily. There are many Hindus who are worse than others. So it is not that because one is Hindu or one is Indian, he is vegetarian. No. But generally, Hindu culture is based on this Vedic civilization. So those who are strictly following, they are following the rules. Any other question? Yes, you can ask. We are very glad to discuss how this is going to Well, I, I don't feel that the issue I brought up before was entirely clarified, at least in, in terms of <laughs> they have no training? Is it? Excuse me? These children? No. No training? So it is risky civilization. We don't train our children. And they are going to be future. A child is the man, father of man, or what is called? Child is the father of the man. Yes. So from the beginning there is no training. So how we can expect good father and good children? They are the divine folk. Divine folk? They don't require any training? They're born divine. They have their own divine religion. They don't require any training. See, they have the religion. They have the one and only religion. That's all right. But religion does not mean that one should be not trained up. Does it mean? They're supposed to be divine. They suppose, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, let me try to delineate that a little more precisely. You know, I, I've known people who have said, well, yes, you know, I don't like birth and I don't like death and I don't like old age, but I have this tremendous driving need and I don't know how to deal with it. You see, I must have sex or I must have this. And I'm, I'm tormented. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in a trap. I'm ensnared. You see, that, that's the, the individual. Line. Now, if you can already reach the person through jnana and, and convince him and he can act on the decision of his will, then he's obviously already in a high state. But what do you do with this sort of person who is split, who is torn by his instinctual physical needs, and they drive him, do you see? And yet he wants to do something. Yeah. Uh, how can you deal with such a person without forcing yes. him to contain himself in no. such a way that he will do damage? No, or must he be allowed to, to, to expend his energies until he is convinced by experience? No. Uh, just like amongst our students, there are many uh, married couples also, and there are brahmacari also, that I have already explained that one who has got a sex desire, he is not barred from this. Yes, he is not barred. Nobody is barred. Simply following some regulation, that will gradually train him. And the main principle is that as you go on hearing about this transcendental message, then you gradually become attached to these uh, transcendental things, and uh, the more you become attached to these transcendental things, the more you forget this material. Thing. So it's an evolutionary process. Yes. That one need not force. No, no, there is no question of force. No. There is no question of force. We don't force. No. There is no question of force. Force, force cannot act. If I force you, then it will not act. You have to evolve yourself from this platform to this platform. But that is possible for everyone. So if someone feels he has an overwhelming need, he shouldn't try to, to hold back to the point at which he suffers pain, but he should also chant or do something that will elevate Yes, him. yes. And gradually yes. he will... He will no. First thing is, suppose a man is too much sexually addicted, if he hears that this is uh, impediment to my spiritual advancement, if he hears, repeatedly, then he thinks of his weakness, that this should not have been done, but I am so weak. So with this 
a knowledge he can advance, you see. At least he must know that this is not good for my spiritual advance. Then it will be that Krishna or God will help him. There is a, in this proverb, one who helps himself, God helps him. Yes, the God's help will come. So there is no question of despair. Anyone can begin, uh, and the, the simple beginning is chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, so all our students, they are also addicted to such things, but by this, following this process they are also now free. Uh, it is not impossible. There is no such program which is impossible to be performed. No. The, practically, this program is the simplest and the easiest process. And it can be adopted by anyone in any condition of life. That is the beauty of this process. In contrast, yoga counsels Oh, that is a not possible process. Because yoga practice, to, you, if you really aim to the perfection of yoga, that is not possible in this age. If you are satisfied simply by some sitting posture and paying the fees, that is your business, you can do that. But it will never get you to the perfectional state because you, can, you are completely unable to perform all the regulations and rules of yoga. That is not possible. That I have described in many so yoga system is very difficult for this age. But if you think that this is a fractional practice of yoga, hundred per one percent, that is not possible to, to reach to the perfectional stage. The perfectional stage is that if one is perfect in the yoga practice, he, he shall die at his will. Material laws cannot act upon him. Yes. He will be practiced to control the inside air in such a way that uh, whenever he thinks fit that now I shall leave my body for such and such planet, I shall go to such and such planet, the yoga system will help him. If he is perfect, but who is uh, such perfect man in the yoga system? It's not possible. But there have been there have been yogis in, in India who have reached. Yes, 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 yes. But they do not come out. But they're very few. Is that because the, because the yoga system is to practice in a secluded place alone. It is not a business that we have to open some yoga class and practice it. No. But his first principle is that he must be alone and in a secluded place, in a sacred place. <coughs> you see, they, that they are described in the uh, standard yoga uh, shastra. So they do not come. Those who are really achieving perfection. They do not come out to the human society. How about the, you know, Paramahansa Yogananda? Hmm? Have you heard of Paramahansa Yes, I have heard about him. But I say the real yogi, they do not come out. But it, because that will fail, it is clearly stated that he must live in a secluded place alone. Then yoga practice perfection is possible. In other words, he has no public ministry of any kind. Of any huh? Kind. He has no public ministry of any no. kind. No. It is not like that. He must be alone. And in a secluded place and sacred place, and the process is to sit. Thank you. You should sit like this, you should eat like this, you should sleep like this, like so. So, so uh, they, give, they gave up. There are many yogis in the history, just like Vishamitra, he was a great king. He gave up everything for practicing yoga. Why? He was king, he could practice yoga. Now, the yoga practice was recommended to Arjuna. Ah, he said, oh, it is not possible for me. So it is not possible. Even five thousand years ago, a person like uh, Arjuna, he refused. Oh, it is not possible for me. 
how ordinary man hey, who has not practiced in controlling the senses and other things, no, it is not possible. The yoga practice is accepted as a standard way of self-realization. That is our right, provided it is sent person properly executed. That is sent person properly executed. Yes, but that is not possible in this age. Nobody can do that. Chaitanya Prabhupada Ah, yes, chant.
राजा सत्कर सदस्य माँ भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती को शामिल प्रवाद की जाए अनंत गौरी वैष्ण बिंद की जाए नामाचार्य शील हिरास ठाकुर की जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत कदाधार शिवाषादि गौर भक्त बिंद की जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण को भूपनाथ शाम कुंड राधा कुंड गृहबंधन की जाए वृंदावन धाम की जाए नवदेव धाम की जाए गंगा माई की जाए जमुना माई की जय सावित भक्त बिंद की जय ऑल ग्लोरी गॉड ऑल ग्लोरी गॉड ऑल ग्लोरी गॉड थैंक यू वेरी मच The whole process is that we are aiming at the highest perfection of life. If there is little inconvenience by following the rules and regulation, we should accept it because the aim is very high. One of the big ideas is the idea of that all life is divine and divine compassion for all life. It's one of the big ideas that all life is divine and therefore we should have divine compassion for all forms of life. First of all, you know what is divine life. Oh, then we will have. Life is a divine origin. If we do not know <coughs> what is divine life, then how we can distribute divine life to everyone? First of all, you have to understand what is divine life. The life which is of divine origin. And that what is what do you mean by divine? The a deity creator. Huh? A, an, a, a God creator. And therefore, since we are included, we are created by God and should have divine There life. are so many creations. But which creation you have to accept? God is creator of so many things. But He created us also. That's all right. He is creator. But He is creator of everything. But why divide everything, bad and good? No, we should have no. No, why do you distinguish this is good and bad? If everything is created by God, but that does not mean that everything is divine. Do you follow? Yes. But we should have. Yeah, you have to learn what is divine. <coughs> Not that because God, God is creator of everything. But we should have divine love for life. That's what I say. What is divine love? What is divine love? Yes. Compassion. That we have to know. Without knowing, how to become compassionate? Just like I'll give you a practical example. This is my personal experience. One boy was suffering from some typhoid disease, and he asked his younger brother, please give me some biscuit. He's forbidden to take biscuit because he was suffering from And he thought, oh, my brother is suffering for want of biscuit. So he supplied some biscuit. And the mother, when she learned that this young boy has supplied this uh, diseased boy biscuit, uh, he, she began to beat him like anything. So she, he thought that I am doing very divine service to my suffering and, uh, brother. But the result was beating by the mother. Therefore one should know what is service. Otherwise he will suffer. Without knowing what is divine service, one cannot be divinely compassionate. First of all, one should 
make his own life divine, then he can make divine compass. Isn't it a simple idea to uh, Love, like. The same thing, if you do not know how to love, then your love may produce bad result. <coughs> That's like the same example. The boy, the younger boy thought that I am loving my elder brother and he, he supplied some biscuit which was forbidden by the physician. And as soon as the mother heard that he has supplied him biscuit, he began to beat her like anything, punishment. He thought it is very good service. He is in need of biscuit. So I am supplying him, stealing from the store. Mother will not know. So I am doing very good service. But the result was beating. Similarly, we may think something that it is divine, but who is judging that it is divine or not divine? Therefore, you have to learn how to serve. Divine, then you can serve. Without knowing, you cannot. That will be disastrous. Everything requires expert knowledge. Otherwise, it will be disastrous. But isn't the general idea? General idea is very good, but the one who is going to bestow divine service. He must know what is divine service and how to become divine. Lord Chaitanya says, Aponi Achuri Prabhu Jivari Sita. One has to, uh, first of all, uh, exhibit himself that he is divine. Then he can, uh, uh, sub, I mean to say, serve others divine. Physician, heal thyself. If a physician is diseased, a person does not like to go here. Well, he is himself diseased. So divine love is very good, but one should understand what is divine love. One should not misunderstand what is divine love. Just like in the material world, lust is accepted as love. A boy is loving a girl, a girl is loving. There is lust. There is not love. But it is going on in the name of love. The boy wants to enjoy the girl, the girl wants to enjoy the boy. And that is going on in love. Love is not like that. Love means I enjoy and not enjoy, I love you. That is love. Just like Kapar said, England, with all thy fault I love you. That is love. There is no return. That's why Radharani is love to Krishna. Or she does not require any return. You see? Krishna left Vrindavan, Radharani, and their whole life remained simply crying for Krishna. Krishna never returned, but he still they loved Krishna. That is love. <coughs> That love is being shown by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? That's rather than his separation, love in separation. So, uh, love means without any return, without any sense gratification, without any consideration. That is love. Aslisha, that is Chaitanya Mahapurusha, Aslisha va padaratang pinasta maha marmahatang kurutu badarasana. The lover is saying to the beloved, either you embrace me with love or you kick me, tramp me down under your feet. And if you make me broken-hearted without meeting me, uh, so whatever you like you can do, still I love. That is love. That is only possible to love Krishna. That is not materially possible. Here the so-called love means he, he or she wants some return for sense gratification. So here the so-called love is lust. 
It is going in the market as in the name of love. There is no love. Is this Krishna in this uh, painting here? Right here. No, no, the next one. He is Krishna, yes. He is loving the cup. Is it a Yes. The cup has come to Krishna like this and is embracing. Yes, come on. Doesn't, doesn't he, he, just see, the calf has no education, no knowledge. 